In 2018 a Japanese animated movie quickly captured the hearts of millions of people. Some viewers cried more than 10 times after watching it. The story revolves around a 15-year-old girl named Makia, who is a member of the ancient Iorf race, also known as the Clan of the Separated. Each Iorf can live for a thousand years, and once they reach 15, their appearance stops aging, so they remain youthful forever. They weave a special cloth called Hibiel, which records the passage of time and their memories throughout their long lives. Makia, the main character, is an orphan raised by the Iorf Elder. The Elder often warn her not to get too attached to outsiders, because even with a thousand-year lifespan, she would still be very lonely. She will have to watch her loved ones grow old and die, unable to do anything about it. This pain of loneliness will accompany her for eternity. Because of this, the Iorf people live isolated from the world, generation after generation, in a pristine, white land that looks like a fairy tale, at peace with the world. However, their tranquil life is about to come to an end. One evening, Makia, sitting by the window, catches sight of Krim, the boy she secretly has a crush on, and quickly climbs out the window to follow him. In a sea of blue flowers, she sees Krim on a date with her best friend, Lelia. It seems like fate is playing a cruel joke on her, as her crush and her best friend have become a couple. Makia, hiding nearby, feels heartbroken. Just then, the roar of an ancient dragon breaks the silence of the night. The neighboring kingdom of Mazarut sends armed soldiers on the backs of flying dragons to the Iorf village. Unable to find the secret to the Lorfa's longevity, the army attacks. Makia screams in surprise, and in the chaos, Krim tells her to hurry back and warn the Elder. She searches everywhere, but she can't find the Elder. The village gate starts to close, and alarm bells ring through the sky. With the power of the dragons, the invaders plunge the Iorf into despair. The soldiers forcefully take away all the women, and those who resist are killed without mercy. Suddenly, one of the enemy dragons goes out of control, suffering from red-eye disease. It wildly races through Iorf territory and crashes into the palace where Makia is hiding. The dragon gets tangled in Hibiel and, as it flees the village, it accidentally carries Makia with it, who is also tangled in the fabric. As Hibiel flutters in the wind, Makia looks at the distant stars, not knowing what to do. This is her first time leaving the Iorf village. The sky outside the village is so vast. The dragon's body gradually turns red, and the flames eventually consume it. In the end, it crashes in a deep forest. The dragon dies, but Makia miraculously survives. Looking towards the Iorf village, she sees the sky filled with fire. The catastrophe came so suddenly, and now, all her hope is gone. She slowly walks to the edge of a cliff, holding Hibiel, ready to end her tragic life. But as she's about to jump, she hears the cry of a baby. Following the sound, she finds a village that has just been robbed by bandits. A deceased woman tightly holds a baby in her arms. The baby seems to have a special connection with Makia, and its cries grow louder as she approaches. Nearby sits a merchant, who says he was on his way to the Iorf village to buy Hibiel. The merchant doesn't care much about life or death and has no plans to take care of the baby. Hearing the baby's cries, Makia wipes away the tears from its eyes, and the baby tightly grips her finger. In that moment, her heart melts. The baby, like her, is now an orphan, and she decides to take it with her. It takes great effort for Makia to pry the baby from its mother's fingers. She can feel how scared the mother was of death and how strong her love for her child had been. A ray of light shines through the dark sky for Makia. Although she never had a mother herself and doesn't know what it means to be one, she secretly vows to raise the child to adulthood and make it the hibial of her life. The dawn light illuminates the dark forest, and her life changes completely from this moment on. To feed the baby, Makia sneaks into a farm sheep pen, which attracts the attention of a barking dog. The owner, Mido, notices the commotion and opens the pen door, finding Makia helplessly trying to steal sheep milk. Mido is also a single mother of two children and knows how difficult it is for a girl to take care of a hungry baby. Mido sees that Makia is an Iorf but doesn't mind, kindly taking in her and the baby, helping Makia find a job weaving cloth. From then on, this place becomes their home. Makia names her son Ariel. Curious, Makia asks Mido what it takes to be a mother. Mido confidently says that a mother should be like her, even though her husband is gone, she must stay strong for her children. Makia looks at Mido's goofy expression and laughs happily. It's been a long time since she has laughed like this. To keep her eye or identity hidden, Mido helps her dye her golden hair orange and teaches her how to be a good mother. Life gradually returns to normal, filled with love. As seasons change and winter 
arrives with heavy snowfall, Mito's dog keeps Ariel company while Makia weaves. Slowly, Ariel begins to take his first step, and every milestone deeply touches Makia's heart. On the day Ariel learns to walk, the villagers praise Makia for becoming more and more like a real mom. What Makia wants to hear the most is Ariel calling her mom. When Ariel finally calls her mom, Mama. Makia is overjoyed and keeps asking him to say it again. On the other hand, the kingdom of Meizirut had built their strength and reputation on their ownership of the giant dragons. But these dragons started getting sick with the red-eyed disease, and there were only a few left. The king of Meizirut, worried about losing his power, wanted to get the secret of the Iorv people's long lives. He planned to mix Iorv blood with his family's bloodline. So, he decided to make a captured Iorv girl named Lelia marry his son, hoping their kids would have the Iorv as long life secret. Lelia, although unwilling, has no choice but to accept her fate. Six years pass, and Ariel has grown up quite a bit. Makia teaches him to weave hibial, telling him that in her birthplace, people don't use words, they convey their feelings through weaving hibial. Ariel weaves a hibial for Mito's old dog, hoping he'll recover from his illness. One day, the weaving shop owner hands Makia a piece of hibial with the news that Lelia is being forced to marry the Prince of Meizirut. Makia realizes that there are still surviving Iorfs and that her good friend Lelia is alive. Makia becomes determined to rescue Lelia. On her way home, Ariel rushes to tell her that Mito's dog has passed away, and they've buried him on the hillside. Having never experienced the death of a loved one before, the dog's death causes Maki a great pain. She realizes that outliving everyone she loves is her greatest pain. Mito's oldest son, Lang, tells her that people who are called mom should never cry. Hearing this, Makia stops her tears. A few days later, Makia leaves with Ariel by boat to find Lelia. On the boat, Playful Ariel runs around the cabin with Makia chasing after him. Makia accidentally bumps into a man wearing a long robe, Krim, her long-lost crush. They embrace tightly, both surprised to find the other alive. Krim has also come to rescue Lelia. They arrive in the capital of Meizirut, where Lelia and the prince's wedding day is filled with celebration. When a dragon appears, Krim deliberately injures it, causing chaos. Makia takes advantage of the confusion and tries to take Lelia away. But Lelia has changed, she's pregnant with the prince's child and can't face her former lover, Krim. Soldiers quickly catch up to arrest Makia, but Lelia threatens them with her unborn child, and they back off. The rescue mission fails, and Krim learns about Lelia's pregnancy. Heartbroken, he decides to continue looking for a chance to save her. Krim bids farewell to Makia, believing that having her and Ariel around would only slow him down. Now, it's just Makia and Ariel again. Makia decides not to return to Mito's home, as she can't bear to lose those she loves. They move to a new place to start a new life. Raising Ariel was easier with Mito's help, but now, Makia must shoulder the burden of motherhood alone. To avoid exposing her identity, she gives up her weaving skills. However, 15-year-old looking Makia struggles to find work. After many failed attempts, no one will hire her. Feeling frustrated and sad, Makia returns home to find that her son, Ariel, has pulled out the loom. She mistakenly thinks he is causing trouble on purpose, and in her anger, she yells at him for the first time. Upset, Ariel runs away from home. When Makia reads the message on the hibial weaved by Ariel, she realizes that Ariel wants to grow up quickly to protect her. Outside, heavy rain pours down as Makia anxiously chases after her son. She spots him near a wall, runs over, and hugs him. Ariel pushes her away, telling her that he wants to grow up fast to protect her. Moved to tears, Makia feels that all her efforts are worth it. She holds her young son and promises to become a good mom. Eight years pass, and Ariel is now 18 years old, while Makia hasn't aged a bit. To avoid suspicion, they pretend to be siblings. Over the years, they've moved countless times for various reasons, eventually returning to the capital of Meizirut. Ariel finds a job in a factory, and Makia becomes a server at his workplace. Meanwhile, Lelia is imprisoned in the Meizirut palace. Her daughter with the prince, Medmel, hasn't inherited the Iorfa's immortality. As a result, Medmel isn't favored, and she isn't allowed to see Lelia since she was little. Trapped in the palace, Lelia is forced to dress up to please the prince, thinking the Iorf are gone. Her only hope is to see her daughter one day. Ariel and Makia appear to be the same age, and Ariel doesn't cling to his mom as much anymore. They claim to be siblings, but gossip still follows them. Some people at the factory believe they're a runaway couple, 
One day, a new supervisor arrives at the factory, Lang, the oldest son of Mido. Lang hopes Makia will go back to Mido's city with him and Ariel. He has special feelings for Makia since he was young, but she refuses to go back. The next day, Ariel approaches Lang, hoping to be promoted to a city guard. Everyone in the city thinks Makia and Ariel are a couple, and Ariel believes he's only holding Makia back and can't protect her. Hearing all this from behind a wall, Makia tries to hide her sadness and lets Ariel go. Ariel is Makia's reason for living, and she's never been apart from him before. Now that he's truly left, she clings to the hibial that Ariel made, vowing to protect her, as she cries. Just as Makia is crying her eyes out, Krim bursts into her house and takes her away. Six years go by, and Ariel becomes a qualified soldier with his own family. His wife, Dita, is pregnant with their child. As Ariel goes from a naive teenager to an expecting father, he understands more and more why Makia loves him so dearly. As the couple dreams of their future, the sound of war bells rings out from the castle in Mazart's capital. The neighboring country's army suddenly approaches the city, and intense bombardment claims many lives. Surprisingly, the cause of all this chaos is Krim. In order to rescue Lelia, he allies with the neighboring country, starting a war. Over the years, Krim has been trying to save Lelia and return the Iorv people to their former lives. Six years ago, Krim kidnapped Makia because he thought she was too selfish. The surviving Iorv people were living in fear in Mazart's capital, while Makia enjoyed the happiness of being a mother. Iorv women can only keep their long hair past their waist if they marry and have children, so he cut off Makia's long hair with a dagger. Makia realizes she must join her people to save Lelia. As the war begins, the king plans to abandon Lelia and her daughter Medmel, escaping with the prince through a secret passage. Since Mazart's dragons gradually died from the red eye disease, only one remains. The kingdom of Mazarut no longer has any bargaining chips against other nations, and those left fighting just want to protect their homes. Amidst the chaos, Krim takes Makia and rushes to the palace. They navigate through the explosions, but their horse is killed by the gunfire, forcing them to separate. In the confusion, Makia encounters Ariel, armed with a rifle. After many years apart, their eyes meet, as if time freezes at this moment. Ariel's comrade is targeted by the enemy, and he has to join the fight. With just a brief glance, mother and son are separated once more. On the other side, Krim finally finds Lelia. The reunion of the former lovers brings them to embrace each other, crying bitterly. Krim wants to take Lelia away, and Lelia wants to find her daughter Medmel and take her with them. However, Krim refuses. He believes that Medmel, who was born from Lelia being forced to have a child with the prince, would be better off forgotten. But Lelia insists on finding her daughter and refuses to let her go. Seeing that Lelia is no longer the girl she once was, Krim realizes that his years of enduring hardship for her have been in vain. In despair, he sets fire to the palace, preparing to die with Lelia. Just then, Krim is shot by a guard. He drags his injured body away, leaning against a tree until his blood stains the water red. He never understands why Lelia and Makia have changed. Perhaps it's because they both have children now, they each have the bond of family love. Makia runs through the chaos of battle. Feeling utterly alone, she stumbles upon her son Ariel's home and meets his wife Dita, who collapses to the ground in pain. Her water has broken, and the baby is coming. Although Makia has never given birth, she does her best to care for Dita in labor while soldiers fight outside the house. On one side, there is the birth of a life, and on the other, the end of lives. Isn't this a cycle? With a cry, Ariel's baby is born successfully. Seeing that the infant looks so much like Ariel, Makia reaches out her finger. Just like Ariel did when he was a baby, the tiny infant tightly grips Makia's finger, refusing to let go. As Ariel fights bravely, he's still outnumbered. The kingdom fails, and when Ariel wakes up from unconsciousness, Makia is already by his side, watching over him. Seeing Makia's worried face, Ariel regrets leaving her years ago. Makia, however, is grateful to Ariel for giving her the strength to live and understand the meaning of life. Now a father, Ariel tells Makia that she taught him tenderness, strength, determination, and how to love others. Hearing this, Makia feels content and knows it's time for her to leave. Although Ariel begs her to stay and calls her mom, after a long time, Father! 
Malkia asks Lang to take Ariel back to Dita so he can protect his own family. Malkia goes to the palace and closes Krim's eyes, who died full of regret. At the palace rooftop, Lelia finally meets her daughter Medmel, who has no memory of her and asks who she is. This makes Lelia realize that Medmel, her only hope in her pain, is also a reminder of her past. Now, she shares only a blood connection with Medmel, but no emotional bond. Lelia decides to let go of her unhappy self. Hearing Makia's call, she jumps from the tower and Makia, riding a giant dragon, catches her. In the air, Lelia shouts for Medmel to forget her and tells herself to forget her life in the palace. She has chosen freedom, and even though it's hard, she must keep moving forward. Many years pass, and Makia visits the farm where Ariel lived with his family. From their daughter's stories, Makia learns that Ariel and Dita had a happy life together. In Ariel's room, he's now old and bedridden. He sees Makia and says, you've come back. Ariel had been waiting for her all these years, and seeing Makia again was his reason for living. After one last glance, Ariel peacefully closes his eyes. Makia always knew this day would come, so she weaves all her memories of Ariel into a hibial and covers her son with it. She kisses Ariel's forehead as his mother one last time, then steps out of the room and looks back. Her memories flood back, Ariel growing from an infant to a young boy, calling her mom, the best response she could ask for. As Ariel grows older, they drift apart, until he leaves home to join the military, starts his own family, and becomes an old man. In these memories, Makia has lived and loved deeply. She has no regrets, as she had the privilege of being Ariel's mother. She gets on the carriage and leaves. This is where the story ends. The Iorf elder once told Makia not to love people from other tribes because they don't live as long as the Iorf, and witnessing their deaths is painful. But through her bond with Ariel and her encounters with others, Makia enriches her life and weaves a unique hibial. For Makia, the joy of meeting and knowing others outweighs the pain of parting. Those beautiful memories give her the courage to want to live through it all again, even with the pain. We don't have eternal life, so everything in our short lives is precious. We are grateful for the past and for our experiences, which have allowed us to keep a tender heart.